So today we're going to do something a little bit different than we normally do. We're not going to geek out on left brain biochemical pathways. We're going to do something that is extremely, extremely important for our clients. And as you know, every single day, people have choices that they need to make. Choices about what they're going to eat, how they're going to live, everything. And many of those choices, what did you say? 35,000 choices a day. It's what it's estimated that each of us gets to make. And guess what? For health, every choice matters. And so I brought in my dear friend, uh, Kim DeYoung, and she just recently wrote a book called The Book of Choice. And she is a choice coach. She's been an entrepreneur and a coach for a really long time and helps people with making those choices. And the purpose of today is we want to empower you as health professionals to work with people and empower them to be able to make their best choices possible so that they get the health that they come to you looking for. So Kim, thank you so much for being here. It's so exciting to have you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you and dig into this. I love this topic. I know you do, and you're good at it. And I've seen some of your videos, and I've looked at your book, and there's just so much to unpack here. So I would love to start with like how we as health professionals can do our clients and our patients the best service to help them navigate through the maze of all these choices that they get to make every day. So if it's 35,000, then we have 24 hours in a day, and maybe we're awake eight of them, 12 of them, that's packed in. That's a lot of choices. So I would love to hear from you, the expert on choices. So we do make 35,000 choices, but those can be from our simplest, what we're wearing, and of course, what we're eating, which is very important to like our big life-defining choices. I mean, it's the gamut of all of them. And I think at the root of what I believe about choice in general, no matter what the choices are that you're making, it's about bringing a thoughtfulness and an intentionality to it. So from the perspective of a practitioner supporting a client, I think it is really the opportunity for that practitioner to support their client to know why they're making their choices, like what matters to them. I think that's really at the root of every choice. Mm -hmm. I think when we know why the choice that we're making matters to us, we're much more inclined to do it. And I think if a practitioner can be supportive of a client kind of getting to that, then they're more supported to do that on a daily basis. And of course, break down the gamut of the choices that they're making that are in their control, that are kind of under their domain from a health perspective. I love that. I love that. And you mentioned a couple of times in your book and in your videos, a live a life examine. What does that mean? And how does that affect us as health practitioners? Why is that important? Yeah. So, okay, I'll, I'll almost take you to the opposite extreme. Imagine if you are the type of person who is not paying attention to your choices. You're just going along randomly, not noticing what you're doing, not bringing intentionality. Your life in that case is really happening to you. You are not in control. You are not a participant of it. But flip side, if you want to live a more examined, thoughtful, conscientious life, then pay attention to the choices you're making. It's quite simple. But you can imagine the, the sort of the dichotomy of like not paying attention versus paying attention. And everything I really believe is bring that awareness to what you're doing as best you can, especially in the choices that really have significance in your life. Yeah, so that makes sense. And we as health practitioners are teaching people about the choices they make in terms of their eating, their meditations, their stress levels, their sleep, their exercise their relationships, right? We make those choices. And yeah, I know you mentioned those big choices, right? Some, sometimes we are dealing with those big choices. Do I leave my partner? Do I move to a new state? Do I move out of my house because I suspect it's moldy? I mean, sometimes those are huge choices. Like yeah. Sometimes they're less huge, but very impactful. Like, what should I eat for breakfast? Should I eat breakfast, right? Should I skip it and go to lunch? So- as practitioners, like 
we're navigating this. How do we help people? Because sometimes they make choices that we just don't want them to make, right? We just, this is not a good choice, right? Go ahead and eat the McDonald's hamburger and the, and the French fries. That's not congruent with what they came to us wanting to achieve. Well, and you're so right. So imagine, so you're bringing up kind of like a big life choice, choosing to move and a relationship. But the reason a client is coming to a health practitioner is they want to feel better. They are making the choice to feel better. They've obviously gone through the gamut of professionals, medical, whatever they've done, and they want support. So they are reaching out to a skilled practitioner to say help. <laughs> and they're putting themselves in their care to say, tell me what to do. And if they've made the investment of time, of resources to be there, they really owe it to themselves to do the work that is suggested to them. And I think that's really what needs to be enforced from the practitioner to the client, which is, look, you came here for a reason. You came here. You don't feel well. I am going to do my best to support you to feel well, to feel better. You are going to need to do these things if this matters to you. Again, be thoughtful. You know McDonald's is not going to lead to feeling well. You know, so give thought in those small moments. What's the bigger picture of what you're here for? You know, and and to do that and to remind them that they're here in a bigger picture. This is not, you're not meant to hand slap them. They, you're, you're looking to educate them, of course, but for them to understand that you're, that they're being given guidelines and, um, and things to follow so that they will feel their best. And each moment, they're kind of little micro choices that they make. Again, am I drinking my water or not drinking my water? Am I going to get up and exercise or not exercise? Am I going to take 10 minutes and meditate or not take, take 10 minutes? Knowing that the cumulative effect of all of these things benefits. And really, again, it, it you talk about it all the time. It boils down to their why. You know, if their why is strong and they know why they began to hire somebody, why they want to do the work, you know, they can't because they don't feel well. I mean, that's at the root of it all. And they want to feel better. And to know that every choice that they make that is in support of that serves them. I mean, that's really the the message. Right. You're right. You're so right. And, you know, it's interesting because what I hear a lot from practitioners is I tell them what to do, but they don't necessarily do it. And I like the way you framed that, that we start out with, look, you chose to come here. That was a choice you made because you're choosing to want to feel well versus to feel like crap all the time, right? And you're going to be making choices every single day. And I'm going to guide you to making the best choices for you based on your labs, based on your, your history, based on your genetics, based on your desires, right? And are you open? And I think that might be a question to ask yeah. people at the beginning. Are you open to making the choices that are consistent with your desired outcome? Because quite frankly, if you're not, I can't help. And that's that's a beautiful message of partnership. You know, it's a two-way yeah. street. I mean, it's, it's any coach-client relationship of the client has to be coachable. And in this yeah. case, that implies making helpful choices and yeah. and guiding them. You know, it, again, I'm sure clients are coming in at different skill levels and education of knowing what they need to do. And some are going to be, you know, kind of at the new level, some are more advanced and it's working with them where they are at that level, but supporting them. And, and, and I think probably a really big opportunity in this case are, is the praising of the micro choice, you know, sort of like realizing even in a morning routine, you know, what are the choices they can make in the morning, whether that's, you know, I get up first thing and I drink eight ounces of water or I have a green juice or I exercise for a bit or I do a meditation. Like anything that is habitual is essentially a choice. You're choosing to do it. And, you know, there could be certain habits of, you know, I, I take X amount of time in the morning, in the afternoon, et cetera, to focus on my self-care. This is a choice I am making for my well-being. And I think that's a, it's a way to reframe it and it puts the client back in control. And I think it gives the practitioner something to support them with as a coach of just, it's a mindset thing. You know, it's really supporting them 
with doing that and I guess finding the balance between practitioner and client of how how to not make them feel reprimanded for not doing it. I mean, it's 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 a it's a process and nobody's perfect. But you know, what does it mean to kind of have that bigger picture? Like, I care about my health. I am therefore going to make the choice to have these habits on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I like what you said, and it's about reminding them and and really setting the tone right at the beginning, right? You have a choice to continue what you've been doing and how is that working for you? Or you have a choice to do things differently, to make different choices at all these 35,000 crossroads and maybe half of them, 30%, even if 10% are related to health choices. That's a lot of opportunity to be in control of your health. And I think that's where people feel a lot of out of control, right? Is they they don't feel like they have control over their health. Their health happens to them. But when we can turn it back around to the point, like you get to choose. Not yeah. not blame, never blame. It's just you get to choose. And we're going to help you make better choices so that you know. It's funny. Just on a personal note, I, I always struggle getting in the proper amount of water as an example. And I like to exercise in the morning. And for whatever reason, I like to go downstairs and have a 32 ounce glass of water before I exercise. That is a choice. And there are days I don't do it, of course, but I'm so aware of that moment, that like micro moment when it's like, am I going downstairs and getting my 32 ounce glass of water or not? And it's it's an easy moment to say, go. Like, I know I feel better when I do it. And, you know, it's yeah. sort of catching yourself and having those key things that you know that you do that feel better for you and and yeah. again it's all you know it, it could be a game it can, you know I think about things we did with our kids with stickers back in the day <laughs> you know it's the kind of thing of some sort of a, a reward even if it's an internal reward of knowing look I drank my water in the first thing I I did a bit of meditation I did those things that I know serve right. and I did right. them right and and when you do them and you do them repetitively it's still a choice, but it becomes less of a of a choice you have to ponder about. Right. You get to just, of course I meditate in the morning. I never get out of bed without meditating. That's mm-hmm. it. I'm doing it for 2,200 days and I'm not going to yeah. break my streak. That's what motivates me to, I keep going with it. Of course I'm yeah. going to drink water. Like I'm not going to not drink water, of course. But at the beginning when you're doing, when when the choices are new, it's a little harder. And that's where we have to, I think, be present with people. Yes. And and that's such an important point. You're right. The presence and, you know, it, whatever tool you're using. Look, we live in an iPhone world or, a, you know, however that is where we've got assorted apps that we can have as double checks and reminders for right. things that matter to us as a process. And again, practitioner to client, you know, you could list those things out for somebody on an app of what what are the things to do, all of that. But it a lot of it is habitual, but you're right. Even when you get in the proper habit of something that's a new choice and then it becomes more ingrained in you, it's still the choice to keep going. It really yes. is all the time. Yes. Absolutely. And not to have like, this is an excuse or that's an excuse. Oh, I don't have to do that. Because that habituation, um, it, it's important to your psyche because once you lose that for a few days, then the choice becomes a little bit harder to make again. Well, and I think what happens is if you let, let's imagine you've set a goal and you're looking to do do something for Monday through Friday, and now it's Wednesday and you haven't done it. Now all of a sudden, self sabotage and blame and all of that stuff starts to show up. You're like, I'm forgetting I didn't do it for two days. Why bother? Versus, okay, I didn't do it for two days. Let me get back on track because I know this is important to me. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about choice mapping in your book, you, the process of choice mapping. Where does that have a place for us as health practitioners in working with people? You know, choice mapping is is a tool that, that anybody can use for any choice. Let's let's actually flesh it out to see how it could be appropriate. So I've I've often taught it to people, let's let's take a non health related choice, for example. Let's say you are choosing to start a new job. And so the concept of the map is this ability to visually capture the components. Why does that choice matter? What could get in my way of making that choice? What's possible? What actions will I take? So now imagine taking it 
applying that concept for a health choice. I certainly think at the bigger level of somebody choosing, it could be both sides, choosing to become a client. It's kind of like, why am I come, Why am I making the investment to work with a practitioner at this time? Why does this matter to me? And also to say, what could get in my way of doing this work? What, what are the things that are to pull me aside? That's very important. You see that all the time. People have great intentions and then they fall off the bandwagon and, and why? And for someone to really have documented whatever they're scared of, if they've got any limiting beliefs, maybe they've tried it before, it hasn't worked, they don't think it's going to work now. I mean, you can imagine all of those voices and that sort of thing. But then for them to counteract those fears with what could be possible if I really do this work? How, be- how much better may I feel? How may my life be different? And to really yeah. visualize the power of that. And then finally capturing in the map, like what actions are you going to take following the instructions of your practitioner? I mean, it's it absolutely can be used, I think, at the bigger level. I think from the perspective of, you know, I choose to, you know, focus on my health is a really important choice. And then using the map to capture kind of, again, the why, the fears, the possibility, the actions is very powerful. Cool. And so tell us a little bit about how you use those in the book, because I know you have samples of choice maps. And I think yeah. that the one on the wall behind you, is that a, is that a, a choice map? No, uh, no that, that was a painting. That, that's not a map. But oh. I am. Um, so I have been mapping choices now for a decade. And I have gone back through my entire life to look at choices I did make to explore all of the details to learn from them and have also created a process, as I was just sharing with you, of how people can look at choices they want to make. And in the book, I take people at a very detailed level of how to do that. And, and it's it's through a lot of stories and a lot of examples and, um, you know, so that people can use this beautiful tool, which can be used as much or as little as you want. What I find is really beautiful about creating a map. And again, let's use the example of the of the client who is coming to work with a practitioner. They've not been well, they've not been feeling well in their choices. I choose to do the work to feel my best. That's a great choice. Mm-hmm. And then they think through the examples and they flesh out the words of a map and they have it to come back to. And when they find themselves off track, as they do, as we all do, to come back and to ground in, why did I say this really mattered to me? What was I so excited about? What do I think is possible? What 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 have the things that I thought could get in my way? Is that what's getting in my way now? And to use it as a benchmark that you can refer back to and, you know, get yourself back on course. I think it's a really valuable tool. Yeah, yeah. So as health practitioners listening in, doctors, nurses, health coaches, physicians, assistants, et cetera, we have lots of different health practitioners listening. We also have some people listening for their own help. So what would you recommend for us to do to embrace more the power of choice with our client? I mean, a beautiful experience could be doing a map with a client, helping them to fill it in. So not leaving it to them, but as part of their intake, not only are you telling them what to do, but as as part of that, look, look, we're here together. We're on a journey. You, you are making a choice to to begin to work with me. And I want to get really clear for you. And I want to help pull the language out of you of why are you here? Like uh, every practitioner is probably quite thoughtful about the why, but to dig into like, what could get in your way? Have you tried this sort of thing before? What's held you back? What's, what's the reason you might be on the fence? And to really help them get to the bottom of like the excitement on the other side, like imagine if you do the work and we work together and we all of these things, like imagine your life when you're feeling better. Imagine your life when you don't have the symptoms that you came in feeling mm. all of that, when you have the energy and the vitality and all of those things. What is your life like? And to help them to see what is on the other side and to help them get clarity on both short-term and long-term actions. I would say the short-term are probably the more important in the moment. And that's where the micro choices come in. And I think that's a beautiful intake process for a practitioner to begin to develop that skill and to have that map be part of the client's, you know, onboarding. Yeah, I like that idea. That's a really good idea. 
So in your book, The Book of Choice, you can get it on Amazon. Would there be like a roadmap that a practitioner could use so that if they want to map those out, like you just said, that they would have like a, a process to take? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I take, I, I take people in general through a general process for any choice and it could be applied to a health related choice. I mean, the, the process is very clear and very simple. And I have many, many, many examples of all types of people making all types of choices. So I think it would be pretty clear on how to, how they could apply it. And, you know, here's the truth about it as a process. It, what I've given to people is a conceptual process. I mean, I certainly show the way, but it's also meant to kind of, as you might with a recipe, you know, take what I've shared with you and doctor it up. Do make it work for you. You know, I show you a lot of ways to use it, but... It's not set in stone. Oh, make it make it your your process. Great. And is it something that a practitioner could use with a client? Like say, here, let's here's this book. Here's how I want to help you to navigate your choices as we go through this coaching process together. I certainly I could see it as twofold. I could see the practitioner having read the book to understand the concepts so that they can now create the map for the client. Mm -hmm. And then I certainly think it's a beneficial read for the client, whether or not they're going to do the maps or not, but for them to have a real sensitive to the importance of them being an intentional partner in this journey with their practitioner. Yeah. Awesome. That sounds awesome. So anything else that you would like to share with our practitioners to really empower them to help people make better choices of those 35,000. <laughs> that number just mind boggles me. It is, I did it that to you. I'm like, really? Yeah. Yeah. Whew. yeah. Yeah. But some of them can be, am I turning left? Am I turning right? You know, you, you start to realize like the get the, the breath of them. You know, I think if there is a message that, that I think about all the time that is the reason I wrote the book. It's the reason I love speaking with people about this content. Um, the truth is we do all make choices. We've all been making choices since we were young and, you know, we've made good choices. We've made bad choices, et cetera. My hope is that through reading this book and taking in the concepts, you take something that you do every day and you elevate it a little bit. You bring a bit more thought to this thing. I'm right. going to make the choice anyway. And can you bring a bit more thoughtfulness and awareness to what you're doing so your choice has greater, you know, it stands out for you, especially yeah. the ones yeah. that matter. Better impact, right? And it's the breadth of that decision and understanding the breadth or the long term, the down the road. And I would see that making a map would help people to see the down the road implications yeah. of the choices, right? How do people reach you? Well, certainly they can grab a copy of the book. If they go to yourchoicebook.com, that links them to Amazon and also has some extra great videos that I've created that help cons with the concepts around the book. I'm on Instagram at Kim D. Young, my website, Kim D. Young. And um, as well, oh, I'll tell you this, I have a great free guide, which you can access at choicequestions.com, which really takes you through the questions to give thought to as you're creating a map. It's certainly in the book, but if you, for the moment, want to just sort of take that in a little bit, those questions are a good place to get started. That's great. So it's uh, we will put all these links Thank on you. the show notes page so people can follow up. And I, I recommend that you do because... Oh, Everybody makes choices every day. Did they eat the pizza for dinner? Or did they eat the salad? Did they get up and exercise? Or did they go back to sleep and put the pillow over their head? Or you know, there's so many of those choices, and we have to be we have to be empowered to help people make empowered choices, right? Choices that matter, choices that take them down the right path to where they want to be. I, I show a slide in a lot of my presentations. It's the you know the pizza at one end and the the salad at the other end, I'm like, what's behind the pizza? Probably more of the same dysfunctional health that you've been experiencing. And what's behind that? It's like further down the road from the choice is either something you want or something you don't want. And the more we can empower people 
to make those choices, the better it is. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing our so well party words of wisdom before we say goodbye. You know, make make your choices wisely, well, and thoughtfully. And thoughtfully. Great. We've been talking to Kim DeYoung, author of The Book of Choice. Uh, go pick up your copy on Amazon or at thechoicebook.com. And uh, use this wisely with your patients, with your clients, because they get to choose every day. We know that. We want to help them to be making thoughtful choices that are going to move them in the direction of their why, in the direction of where they want to be. So um, this is just part of being a good practitioner, right? And um, if you want more information on all the other aspects of being a good practitioner, go to inemethod.com. And until next time, shine on.